Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 103. It's on wave energy, which is directly related to wave amplitude. If we were to look at waves in the ocean, as the wind blows over the surface of the ocean, you get these surface waves. You can see there's less energy the farther we go down. The water's kind of moving in this circular path, but we're transferring energy from point A to point B. How much energy is dependent upon the amplitude of the wave? And so the higher the crest and the lower the trough, the more more energy there is. And we're letting that go. And humans are looking at that right now. They're installing these wave energy generators. This one's off the coast of Portugal, and this one will be off the coast of Oregon. And what they'll do is as they move up and down, they're running a little turbine that's generating some electricity. And so waves transfer energy through oscillations. Those oscillations can be longitudinal in longitudinal waves. That's where the oscillations are parallel to the movement of the wave, or they can be transverse, where they're perpendicular. In both cases, the maximum displacement, how big the wave is, is the amplitude. And since waves transfer energy, the amplitude is a direct measure of the amount of energy. In a longitudinal wave, we could measure that using the density changes within the compressions. In a transverse wave, it's easier. We just measure how high the crest is, how low the trough. But again, it's directly related to the energy being transferred through the wave. So let's say we're looking at sound waves, for example, which are a longitudinal wave. What would be the amplitude of a sound wave? It's not going to be the pitch. It's going to be the volume of the wave itself. How big is that wave? So let's take a look at wave amplitude using a sim bucket simulation. So we've got a rope wave here. You can see the wave is moving from left to right, but the oscillation is perpendicular. So this is a transverse wave. But as I increase the amplitude, what's happening, you can see there's greater and greater oscillations. What does that imply about the wave energy? The higher the amplitude and the lower below equilibrium, the greater energy that we have. How could you measure that? If we have a static picture, you simply measure how high and how low. That's the wave amplitude. Now, let's say we're listening to a sound. It's hard to see that. And so we can use the volume to measure that. So let me, let me play a note for a second. So this is A. I can have different shapes, and it sounds different. I could change the frequency, and the pitch will change. but it's still carrying the same amount of energy because the waves have the same height. How could I change the amount of energy in a sound wave? Well, we could do that by simply changing the volume. And so that's the amplitude. So if I take that pitch and I lower the volume, or I raise the volume, then the amplitude gets greater and therefore the amount of energy that that wave, in this case sound wave, is actually transferring. And so did you learn to explain or predict qualitatively how the energy is related to the amplitude of a wave? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.